Welcome. Five, four, three, two, one. It's Welcome. Wow Wednesday. Wow Wednesday at Covenant Celebration. <laughs> Mark and Susan Huddleston are your hosts Woo-hoo. and the leaders at Covenant Celebration. So, uh, welcome to everyone tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everyone is uh, doing well. I hope you've had a victorious day in Messiah. I've heard some good report, at least one good report today from someone, and so Come that's on. good. We like good Hallelujah. reports. Hallelujah. Good reports. I don't know that I can share that one, but. Right, right. Hallelujah. That's good. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for that. Yes. And there's no telling how many good things Jehovah Elohim did for us today that we're not even aware of. That's very true. Very true. How many uh, falling space objects did he prevent <laughs> from falling into the space today? Well, it's no laughing matter. There's it's, more stuff coming down. <laughs> it's happening, man. I'm thankful it missed us, though. Hallelujah. Thankful, too. Uh, there's just, um, you know, in general, there's so much fire going on yeah on and drought not just in the u.s but the largest river in france is just lowest record water level ever Mm -hmm. i think and they're banning the farmers from watering their crops yeah not a good thing i'm thinking i would have banned people from taking showers or <laughs> washing clothes but i would keep food production going i'm not saying they're making a bad decision i'm just saying i keep food production going yeah it's an interesting choice unless you have another motivation yeah interesting choice so a lot going on with france right now we got a i'm not sure if i've got his name right but i think it's mohammed bin saeed from uh, the uae's uh, the new president there, United um, Arab Emirates. Yeah, he just came over and said hi to Macron. And the new Lapid uh, Prime Minister of Israel just went to say hi to Macron. And somebody else just went to say hi. It's amazing. I don't know what's going on over there in France. Maybe they're uh, trying to bring some water or something. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah, very interesting. They got that uh, Lake Mead is still going down as the water keeps going down out there and i think i saw where they had found three they found three bodies in the lake as it's going down they're finding these bodies that have been in there i think i saw look like a pretty brand new truck off the oh, bottom really? of the, yeah, wow. down in there oh really yeah wow so i don't where's lake mead it's over in the four corners area but i'm not real sure okay. where right around there i know um, las vegas gets their water from there i think oh okay if I'm correct, I don't know all the lakes of the world. <laughs> I remembered working on those in fifth grade with my daughter, but it's been a while. Been a while. Yeah. I think uh, I've never heard of fire this big, but in Spain, if I'm remembering all that detail right, they have 80 square miles burnt. Wow. 80 square miles. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of area that's a lot that's i mean it's probably lot. just close I don't, I don't know i mean that's either the size of the county we live in or that plus more wow just i don't know how many towns that it impacted mm-hmm. but 80 square miles a big chunk of land well i'm telling you the earth pains are birthing or they're getting ready to birth they're having travail right now it's gonna birth a millennial reign and it's doing its thing right now it is and that's what we're praying for we're praying for his kingdom to come his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven yeah and the first form of that or the ultimate form of that is Yahushua reigning during the millennial right and then he's gonna he's gonna um, this the the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. Mm-hmm. Talk about we were, a fire. <laughs> we were talking about a fire. Yeah. yeah. And, and an object as large as the heavens and earth is going to burn up. That's a lot of fire. Well, so it can be renewed. It's got a yes, positive but the outcome. Fire is a thing. I'm. What kind of fire is it going to take to burn that up? Uh, it's a hot a lot, one. Lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. 
What are those that measured in Kelvin? I don't know what Kelvin uh, that would know. be. <laughs> that may be off the scale. <laughs> I don't know if they got a scale for that, yeah. That's probably just a breath. But it's it's going to birth the new. Yeah. And we're going to see what everything looks like with Yehovah Elohim and his son ruling and reigning. Come on. I mean, that's going to be so fantastic. I'm ready. It's going to be so fantastic. The Father's had me, from time to time, he just leads me on searching into some things that have been going on kind of under the radar in our nation and nations, just acts of wickedness and things. And I don't usually want to look at it, but he's like, you need to know. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of research in that. And I'm just telling you, when you look into things that are happening in the world that are not yet obvious, but will be one day, you will cry, come Yeshua. You just will, because Amen. he is coming with Amen. right rulings. He's coming with Amen. justice, and he's going to restoration. Restoration, make wrong things right. Yeah. And uh, so, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a thought about that. Um, I thought I saw that escaping my go, mind. Go up out there. We got some folks grabbing in here tonight. Good. Hallelujah. Welcome to everyone. Kevin was the first one. He Yay. was reminiscing about all that good ice cream that we had. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody, what are we going to talk about tonight? Lisa? I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about cheesecake. <laughs> or cake. Yeah. Just in general. Uh, uh, someone, which, most people online won't know right. what that's about. Go ahead. So tell them. Well, someone showed up. We had a... Um, the fellowship. Somebody blessed us with sandwiches again for our fellowship this month. So we just had a, a blessing for that, but somebody just spontaneously showed up with all these different flavors of ice cream. And I think it was Chris ran up to me in the middle of the, the dinner and said, do you realize that these are the flavors we were talking about on Wow Wednesday? And I said, no, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so somebody brought all that so in. Somebody's listening and bringing ice cream. So thank you, thank you, thank you, whomever you may be. Oh, man. That was good. Oh, man. Kevin's in here. We got Miss Chris in here tonight. Rosie's Yay. in here. Yay, Miss Rosie. Hallelujah. Pamela's in here. Shalom Girl is in here. <laughs> I love that name, Sydney. I told her that was her superpower. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, just imagine that you walk into a place and it's just in chaos. Or there's, like, fighting or... You know, Strife. something's going on, and you just walk in with your superpower and go, Shalom, and everything just goes, you know, peaceful. It's like Yeshua did in the storm when he yeah. said, Shalom, be still. That was his superpower. <laughs> it is a superpower. It Peace is. is. <laughs> it's Yehovah Elohim's superpower, but it is a superpower. It is. We got Miss Dottie in here tonight. Yay. So, oh, Chris wants to talk about cookies. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't got your heart set on cookies, do you? <laughs> My no. favorite cookie right now is Catalina Crunch, which is a keto brand. Um, they have a sandwich cookie, which I'm really not a big sandwich cookie, but these are good with the chocolate wafers and then the cream in the middle. They're mm. just a little something different than what we've been eating, and right. uh, I've been enjoying those. Cindy's a snickerdoodle girl. I can see that. I read a uh, funny about uh, Snickers. What? Uh, this this was a sign, and it said, "Every time I think about eating healthy, mm -hmm. a Snicker bar laughs at me." Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, uh, it know. does laugh back if you eat too many of them. That's for sure. Oh. Hallelujah. I, well, bet, uh, I bet Kevin's a chocolate mint guy. I don't know. I don't know either. But we sure did have a good fellowship on uh, this past Sabbath. We did. We had a real good time. It's really a blessing to, to come in, just sit down and enjoy the fellowship. Oh, that is like, takes the cake in a, in a way. If you want to say it that way, you just come in and just set it out. And everybody gets something and. It's, it's really not a nice. bunch of cleanup set up and all that. It's really nice. Yeah, we just appreciate nice. those that that made that happen on Sabbath. Oh, so. man. Blessings back on you. I mean, well, we're um, going to get started here, I guess, and uh, just have some prayer and praise mingled together. Mm -hmm. 
and some worship from our own hearts tonight. Then we're going to do some waiting on the Father. Susan's got another new piece of music that we can wait to tonight. What a blessing. I got a little one. Hallelujah. Still in process, but I think it's presentable. Okay, good. And uh, so we'll wait to that in just a minute. <clears throat> so I do want to ask everyone to just uh, wherever you're at in your home or recliner or couch or you might could be in the bed. I don't know. But I just want to encourage you to just engage the Father's presence tonight as a corporate thing together while we're uh, praying and praising and worshiping at this moment. I want to just encourage you in your homes and just, uh, just by faith express worship to the Father. If you can, lift your hands. And I mean, I don't know. If you can't lift your hands, just get your finger to go up, you know. Just get it all up. Just get what you can. Just, just give him worship all that you can. So Changes Father, your atmosphere. It will change the atmosphere in your home. Yes, it will. Change the atmosphere around you as yes, well. Yes, it will. A lot of times if you're being bombarded with negative stuff, mm -hmm. if you just stop and just shift focus to worship, mm -hmm. it just diffuses that mm -hmm. spirit that's trying to bring that negativity in. And so... Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And if you can't sing something, a lot of times I just put music on, uh, a song of worship or praise or something, and, and it helps you get, you know, into it more and get get it going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's let's pray together and let's lift our hands and open our mouths and give Yahuwah praise. Hallelujah. And just give him and his son the worship that's due to them. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. I give you praise. I Ooh, Father. You. You are high and lifted up. Thank you for your mercy. You are high and lifted up tonight. Hallelujah. Father, in your presence, there's seraphim flying around your throne. In your presence, there's worship and adoration and uh, just lavish praise going up. At the glory and the esteem of your awesome, almighty, all-powerful everywhere present, all knowing the activity in which you're doing things in the earth and yes, beyond and underneath the earth. Father, if we could see all that, we would just be in the ecstatic worship that those uh, messengers and set apart ones that have went before us who are forever in your presence are worshiping you tonight. Yes. So Father, from our hearts, from our minds, from our will and from our desires and our emotions, and our physical bodies tonight. We just give you praise. Yes, praise. We just give you worship and honor, reverence and majesty. We humble ourselves before you, Father. Thank you, Father. Today, we just had all kinds of activity. We've been involved in all kinds of decisions and situations, and uh, some things have been very uh, draining mentally and emotionally, Father. But right now, we just turn our attention and focus toward you and everyone that's just been mentally drained or emotionally drained today father or physically drained today father i just pray for a refreshing and infilling of the set apart spirit tonight just that life giving life quickening yes. word of god quickening spirit yes. just quicken their mortal body tonight just quicken quicken their mortal body tonight father and we thank you for that tonight quicken my mortal body yes. quicken susan's mortal thank body you. father and all who listen tonight and at other times, quicken them, Father. Make it alive by your presence, Father. And we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the esteem. We'll give you all the majesty yes. tonight, Father. Praise you, Father. We just uh, do give you that praise tonight in Yahushua's name. Let all those who love him and worship him say, Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have a name for that one? I do not. It's Psalm 5 right now. Psalm 5. <laughs> Psalm 5. Psalm 5. 5 is a number of favor. Mm-hmm. Psalm 5. Did you get something? Well, this, uh, this was quickened to me in waiting tonight. It's got waiting in it. Mm. And it's... Uh, it was cooking to me in this morning as well. And this is from the song we did on Sabbath from Psalm 31. Mm -hmm. It is verse 12. And it says, Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in Yehovah. In my footnotes, I've obviously done a word study in here somewhere. And I put in quotes at the end of it, in the battle. In the battle. And so the way that this would read with that insert in it is, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart in the battle. Wow. All you that hope in Jehovah. Mm. A lot of times when you see the word hope in the uh, original covenant, the word the Tanakh, the Psalms, or the prophets, mm -hmm. it's the word wait. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's waiting in expectation. Hope is earnest expectation. So the thing about this that, that means, uh, uh, that encouraged me today was, um, and there's favor that comes with it, so that's, the real thing behind it. Amen. But it be of good encourage and he will strengthen your heart in the battle. So notice the progression. Progression is be of good courage first. Mm -hmm. So you have to respond to his word by faith. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide to be of good courage. And when you decide that you, if you, this word's quickened to you like it was quickened to me, this is the literal process I went through with this scripture. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart in the battle. Well, what was quickened to me was at first was in the battle. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been watching and listening to some of uh, the wars actually described in the book of Daniel in chapter 11. And... Uh, Alexander the Great is one of those that's discussed in there. And I've been watching a documentary on his military exploits, which, you know, uh, I don't know how to say that, but he did that. And God was involved in that to some way, but God is not into just killing people for the sake of wealth and riches and money and power and all that. He's not, you know, and so that's a complication with that. But we are in a battle ever bit as and more real than what he did because what we're doing is forever. And if you noticed, Alexander the Great's not around anymore. Right. So what all he did was for a very short time. Right. But our battle's forever. But there has to be, when, the, when, the, when a word is quickened to you, there has to be a believing choice made. Mm -hmm. And before you get strengthened in the battle, if this word's quick to you, you have to choose to be encouraged. Mm, that's good. And, and that's, that's faith. Mm -hmm. And that whatever's not a faith is sin. sin. Yeah. So you have to choose to believe that word when he quickens it to you. Mm. A lot of times your flesh will go, I don't wanna really want to believe that because I don't want to go through the battle or whatever. Right. But you don't get a choice on that. <laughs> Well, if you're, you got you're choices, born in a battle. you should have gave them up a long time ago. <laughs> you're born in a battle. You're born into a galactic war, <laughs> to say the least. But be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart in the battle. Yeah. All you who hope or wait in and for Jehovah. Mm, mm. So I thought that was a that was a. I wouldn't have shared that unless I felt like I should share it. But yeah. I felt like I should share that word tonight, and just hopefully that ministers somebody encouragement mm -hmm. in that way. But to be encouraged be, means yes. to be encouraged. Yes. To be of courage and of a strong heart. So I receive that. 
I mean, I received that courage tonight. Kevin said he would call it "What's Done in Secret re Will Be Revealed." <laughs> so I mean, it's good because there's going to be a battle that's going to reveal it all. That's for sure. That's right. Every battle reveals it. Yeah. Every struggle we go through reveals what's it, what. Where's our faith really at? Yeah. Every, every one of them do that. I didn't really get anything when I was working on that today. Sometimes I just follow the sound and spontaneously record parts and mm -hmm. believe Father for it to come together. But, of course, I was just doing it on my iPad today, so it was those little speakers. I really hadn't heard it in a full speaker until I got over here and uh, was playing it just for a minute before service. And then, then but I just kept hearing, um, I don't want to say red carpet, but... I was seeing like a red carpet rolled out and something approaching. Hmm. It was like that steady, and it was just like being rolled out, and it was hmm. it was coming. So it could be, you know, um, there's more force than against us that the the armies of heaven, Jehovah of hosts, be encouraged. I mean, you know, that He is with us He's, and yeah. He is coming in His fullness. So that word hope is in there. Yeah. I Which was feeling that hope and earnest that, yeah. expectation, and that's mm -hmm. what you're communicating. Mm -hmm. It was something Seven. good coming, hopeful that coming, encouragement. That, that support mm -hmm. coming, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that victory coming, mm -hmm. that esteem of God being fully manifested in Amen. the victory of it. Hallelujah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Susan tonight, as we're going to read some scripture before we start from 2 Corinthians. Rosie said that word was for her tonight. Oh, okay, Rosie. Hallelujah. Bless you, ma'am. I was praying for you earlier today, and all of our online people by name that mm -hmm. I know, I was praying for and you just too. lifting them up, and uh, the Spirit just had a special place in His heart for everybody today, so hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, Rosie, and may you see the fruit of what you're battling Be for. Be encouraged. Be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. that, Psalm 27 I think it's verse 14 says almost the exact same thing mm. be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart i know that's right yeah and wait upon jehovah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just right there so that's where i originally was challenged by the spirit to believe god for courage when mm. i didn't feel like i was going to win or be encouraged or had the strength mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. so the courage precedes the strength to do it that's good and the faith to believe that word will gets the impartation of strength mm -hmm. whereas if you look in second corinthians 12 9 his favor is sufficient for you for my miracle power or strength mm. is made perfect in your weakness I'm so, so glad. it could be very easily talking about miracle power being displayed here and not just physical muscle yeah you know yeah, yeah. just you know grunting it out physical strength but actually an impartation of miracle power amen so father everybody that needs the miracle Hallelujah. power to be encouraged to yeah. have uh, their heart strengthened in the day of battle and all those that hope in Jehovah, let that be done amen amen hallelujah in Yahushua's name i'm going to ask susan to read uh, from some of my notes here the uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4 through 10. We read them last week, but I'm going to read them again from the Weist translation of the New Testament. Weist. So it's just a couple verses on the second page, but just those. Starting right here? You would read, yes. Okay. We are giving no occasion of stumbling to anyone in order that our ministering service may not be found with blot or blemish, hmm. and thus be censored. But in all things, recommending ourselves to God's ministering servants should do. In patience under trials, bearing up and not losing heart or courage. Mm. In afflictions, calamities, mm. and straits. In distressing situations, in stripes inflicted by a beating with rods. Mm. In imprisonments, in the midst of political instability in labors to the point of exhaustion, in sleeplessness at night, in hunger, in pureness, in knowledge, in long-suffering, patience under ill treatment, in kindness marked by gentleness and graciousness, in the Holy Spirit, in love void of hypocrisy, 
in the word of truth, in God's power, by the means of the weapons of righteousness, offensive weapons, mm. all o- offensive weapons, on the right hand and defense weapons on the left. By glory and dishonor, by slanderous report and good report, as those who are disseminating deceit and yet true as being a non-entity, obscure, without proper credentials and yet fully recognized. As dying and behold, we are living. Behold, we live. As chastened, but not put to death, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many wealthy, as having not even one thing yet possessing all things. Hallelujah. Good word. Thank you, Mr. Weist. That is good. It says we are giving no occasion of stumbling to anyone in order that our ministering service may be found without blot or blemish and thus be censored, but in all things recommending ourselves as God's ministering servants should do. And I, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but I was someone share with me, and these people were uh, in a new, just fairly new to following Messiah. And it seemed like every congregation they went to, the leadership fell apart. Wow. And the, the last one, there was more than one leadership person involved in sexual sin mm. and it could be that someone's listening tonight has been discouraged by that kind of activity in a congregation mm-hmm. in a leadership and I would believe that God is saying don't let that tear down your faith. Don't let that beat you down. Amen. And to to be strong by be of good courage and let him strengthen in your heart by faith and he's going to restore to you Mm -hmm. whatever that would have taken away from you. So Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage anybody that's ever been in that type situation and these people just had enough favor on them to trust God through it all. Hallelujah. And not uh, just, their mind's just real. They didn't, this was supposed to be, you know, the best of the best sort of kind of thing. And right. It was just, it just, just the not. <laughs> carnality of flesh just overcame these people. Wow. And I don't think that's, it's not even in existence anymore because mm-hmm. of that. But anyway, hallelujah. hallelujah. Be of good courage. In that. Be of good courage. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we are looking at the accomplishment. Say accomplishment. Accomplishment. We are looking at the accomplishment of the favor of Elohim on the life of a man named Shaul. This favor accomplished something in him. He did not use the favor of Elohim in vain, but in 1 Corinthians 15.10, 1 Corinthians 15.10 from the scripture translation, it says this about this man and his favor. He says, but by the favor of Elohim, I am what I am. And his favor toward me was not in vain. So he's, he's got this don't use favor in vain thing in his heart. Mm-hmm. But by the favor of Elohim, I am what I am. And his favor toward me was not in vain. But I labored much more than the all. He's referring to the other apostolic t- people. He said, but I labored much more than the all. And then he gives this zinger. Yet not I, but the favor of Elohim with me. Mm, come on. So he's saying that he labored more than others, but it wasn't him that was producing the labor. Yeah. But it was the favor of Elohim on him. It's true. It's Listen true. to that. But the favor of Elohim worked with me. Note how this man of Elohim, man of God, attribute, attributes all his labor to the energetic force or working force of the favor of Elohim. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. We would not be here. I mean, we would not be enduring. We would not be encouraged. We would not be standing. Standing. We would, we would not be in faith. 
ministering. For by favor are you saved through faith. You guys the would not be here first. tonight if it wasn't for the favor of God on our lives. I mean, it, it Amen. is. Favor draws us. This is the testimony of the spirit of favor being effectively upon Shaul and effectively through him. It was effectively on him mm. and effectively through him. Come on. And that's what, that's what God does. It, it, his favor comes on you and it affects you. Oh. And then it comes through you and it affects through you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all kinds of testimonies and stories about that. Yeah. May we all have the same experience and testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we wouldn't be here without it. Now, if I counted correctly, there's a list of 20, 38, 38 descriptive words used in the list we have in 2 Corinthians 4b through 10. I think I said it was 30, but when I, I, I went and numbered it all on a written text. There's 36, 38. Is it 38? I've got 38 written here. I think it's 38. I think mm. it's 38 descriptive words he's using in this list. Mm. I find it amazing that this man, through his experience of Jehovah's favor, could categorize yeah. 38 of these various aspects of not using the favor of Elohim in vain. Mm -hmm. That's just amazing. That's another wow to me. Yeah. For him to yeah. be able to, and, and he's not being repetitious. And you know, I was tempted, and I'll bring this out maybe later in the text on a specific one of these uh, 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 descriptive words that we look at tonight. But I was tempted to discredit going through this list because it's a list. And there's just, you know, it's a list. It's a you know, it's a, it's a list. It could be a boring list, you know. And it's just a list in these words. We can, we can read them all in less than a minute probably. But to practice them and to have this work in your heart by the favor of Elohim and then actually categorize this and have that as a reference point and a tool mm -hmm. that you know how to respond. And in this case, 38 different scenarios situations and they're not with these like, descriptors words i have a hangnail i have a headache <laughs> yeah that's right i had uh, somebody cut in front of me in the grocery line oh yeah they were out of the flavor of uh, yeah. <laughs> drink that i liked i mean these are this is some favor on this man right here it is and the purpose of it is to uh equip us and to cause us to come to maturity Hmm. That's been a whole theme in First and Second Corinthians. Say that again. The purpose of this. the the purpose of it is to cause us to come to maturity. So the purpose of the list list of his categorizing the, and teaching them to the Corinthians is to encourage them to come to maturity. Wow. And through this list, he's building. He's always building in these these scriptures. If you take them to heart, he's building into the subject. He's wanting to do the challenge he's wanting to give the truth that he's wanting to share he's building into that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's doing that in this list and um he's doing that in this list to grow us to maturity for the honor of our master yehoshua messiah mm -hmm. so i want to i'm going to read the verses at the end of the list again to get you to see where he's trying to go yeah come on and so this is, this is verse 11 and 12, 13 and 14. I'm just going to read the A part of 14. Okay. But he's, he says, Our mouth has spoken openly to you, O Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. He's talking about he has not held back any truth of anything that he has experienced in his life and that has worked in his life and the power of God that has, the power of Elohim that has come through him, mm -hmm. he's, he's graphically and alarmingly calling their attention to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Corinthians. And our heart is wide open. He's saying, when we were with you and building a relationship with you, we didn't hide anything that is in our hearts. We brought out everything. 
So he didn't stand up front with a perfect hairdo, perfect suit, perfect shoes, and perfect Bible cover and say, life's wonderful, I have no issues, I'm not dealing with anything. It's all good. It's all good. He didn't oh, do God. that, did he? He did not do that. <laughs> he did not do that. What is all good is living for eternity in the mm -hmm. here and now. Mm -hmm. That's all good. Mm -hmm. So so he he's telling them this. So this list is he's he's this list is leading into that statement and then and we'll mention this several times, but in chapter seven, verse one is where he's going to challenge them again and make it a little more clear what he's challenging them with. But he says, Our mouth has spoken openly to you, O Corinthians, O believers, O chosen people, O I, Israel, O you who call yourself by God's name. Yeah. He's saying to them, Oh, our heart's been opened wide to you. You are not restrained by us. But you are restrained by your own affections. Hmm. In other words, they were not responding with open mouths and open hearts. Hmm. Like he had and his ministry team had set the example there in that Corinthian environment, in mm -hmm. that Corinthian city. And they had, instead of opening their heart, they had restricted or closed hmm. their affections. In other words, they wasn't going to let everything be on the table and get what and let deal with the things that they needed to deal with. Wow. So you're not restrained by us. He's saying you can't say that it was because we didn't live it in front of your lives because we did. We spoke open to you. We revealed everything in our heart to you. We we dealt with our hiccups and our hangups and everything and it's, it's public information. Right. To you Corinthians Verse 13, but for the same reward, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts too. Mm. So you're saying mutually open your hearts like we've exampled or demonstrated in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then he makes this phrase, and you think he changed subjects. You just would. <laughs> you would. You just would. In verse 14, <laughs> he says, do not become unequally yoked with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking, okay, I got that, but. He turned the corner. You, you, yeah, <laughs> he went right. Like... Yeah, he turned right and I didn't see where he went. Yeah. But the implication is from him saying, we, we spoke openly to you, our heart is wide open to you. He's saying, uh, yoke with us. Oh. And not with the unbelievers. I gotcha. Not with the people that are holding back or the people that are carnal or the people that are not going on or the people whose hearts are not wide open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's saying, don't get hooked up with that. Mm -hmm. And so you, you tend to break this fragmented is what happens. We've been taught to cherry pick scripture, pick what you want and leave the rest. You know, well, that's not legitimate Sad. in scripture. Uh, but that connection is... Our hearts have been wide open. We've spoken openly to you. Open wide your hearts to us. Be yoked with us. Wow. Don't get yoked with the unbelievers. And he's going to spend the rest of the chapter dealing with just that subject. Mm. You know, and the consequence and negativity of that subject. Awesome. So, hallelujah. All right. So, let's start. And we're going to start back. I know we covered some of this last week, but I felt the set-apart spirit just... Lead me to go on it. Now, some of these we'll spend a minute on. Some of them we won't spend time on, but okay. a lot of time. But we're going to look at these things again. And I tried to give them just very short definitions, but give some exclamation, explanation on some of them that the Spirit was leading to emphasize. Mm -hmm. And so um, <clears throat> in verses 4 and 5, it mentions 10 trials of the, to the flesh. These first 10 words that we're going to deal with deal with flesh things. And you can take these in one way or the other. You can take them as trials 
that they are working for you and exceeding an eternal weight of glory or esteem. Or you can take them as a negative thing and go, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Or you can go, this is, God is working in this. I'm going to get everything he's got for me. Mm -hmm. All of these types of overcomings, and there's 10 in this first two verses, there's 10. And um, are all, you overcome by the favor. Because that's what this whole chapter is about. He starts it off. This is about the favor that's here. When is it here? Now. Yeah. It's here now. Yeah. And so I just, <laughs> I just encourage you to receive favor now. Yes. Hallelujah. In the battle, Come in on. this list of things that we're going to deal with. Yeah. And so the number one was in much endurance. And we talked quite a bit about that last week. Mm -hmm. But as I was studying it more, there's a little bit of uh, addition I want to put to that. It's being patient, and we talked about patience a lot last week, and that's just one of the, the one greatest, of the most excellent <laughs> virtues there is, is patience. And it's being patient with adversity, mm -hmm. being patient in adverse circumstances, not letting adversity shape or form you, but being patient in it by the favor of God's Spirit upon you, being patient with that adversity mm -hmm. and I actually wrote down that Psalm 31 12 there in my notes because that was an encouragement to me so it, in much endurance being patient with adversity the second one of these trials to the flesh is in it says in pressures in pressures and I was looking that up and reading about it in the vines expository dictionary of Old and New Testament words is the title of the book. Um, and it said, the antagonism of persons. Hmm. The antagonisms of persons. Hmm. Shaul had these Judaizers mm -hmm. that went behind just about everywhere he preached and stirred up trouble. And they tried a lot of times very successfully to stir it up why he was there. Mm -hmm. And it got him in some of those beatings and imprisonments that he was in. Yeah. But he's right here encouraging us as a part of this list mm -hmm. is in the antagonism of persons. You ever had a person that antagonized you? Mm -hmm. That that they were they were a pebble in your shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, uh, uh, you know, a, a, just, thorn in your flesh. a thorn in your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's not uncommon for God's favor to work in you and through a situation where a person is antagonizing you, mm -hmm. provoking you in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. Some people think it's their gift to provoke people to act in the flesh or something, wow. you know, they, you know, to provoke people. And that that's. That's not provoke them to uh, love the works. love of God <laughs> and inspire good works, yeah. but not invoke them to be angry or invoke them to get in the flesh or to uh, say things to draw them into something that's wrong. Yeah. So, but the agnet and tag, I think everybody can relate to that. There's that, mm -hmm. and it may not be intentional. It may just be who the person is, and they're that that area of God's work they haven't. God in dealt with that. It could right. be a believer. It doesn't have to be an unbeliever. Or they could be an agent of the enemy. They could be. Yeah. Absolutely could. And there's some discernment needed there. Mm -hmm. But regardless, mm -hmm. there's favor. Mm -hmm. The spirit of favor is there when you're in that kind of pressure. And the good thing is, is, as you go through this list, he, w he lived to write about it. Yeah, he overcame. <laughs> you know, I mean, favor. that's how big the favor is. He was able to write the list after after it. You to, know? to have this depth of work in your heart yeah. and be able to preach this mm -hmm. is just the favor of God. You, you just know, can't say anything else. I don't want to say too much because I want you to get through the list. But um, I've been reading through the Book of Acts, and it's been mm -hmm. amazing to me how much more alive the passages on Shaul are after having gone together through this Corinthian study on 
the trials and the pressures and just more about Shaul personally and some of the things the Set Apart Spirit has given you to bring out. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really struck me quickly the other day was when, you know, he was knocked off of his horse on his way to, was it Damascus? He was Um, on the road to to Damascus. Yes. And um, received the call to be a minister because of Mm -hmm. God's favor. Mm -hmm. And he took him to the city and then um, the, the prophet came to him with the word that said you need to go and tell Shaul that he has been, and this is a paraphrase, but pre-appointed for the things that he must suffer for my sake and minister, for ministry. So he began his ministry with the understanding of what he was called to suffer and endure. And to me that spoke encouragement, that spoke hope. But how many times do people start their um journey of following Yehoshua by thinking you're going to get rich and famous and never have a bad day and all this Mm -hmm. and you're not you're not given that true prophetic word that says many are the afflictions of the righteous but Yehovah delivers you out of them all in this world you have tribulation but be of good cheer I've overcome Overcome the world world, yeah and that reminds me of um, and Cindy will particularly pick up on this the Pilgrim's Progress animation the most recent one um he, the first difficulty he has is, and this is archaic language, it's the slow, slow of despondency. Mm. What it is, it's a mud pit, but it's not really mud. It's where the fears and the doubts of all those who don't go on in the journey mm-hmm. end up in there like you fall into it and it's like mud on you. It's hard to get out. You feel like mud, it looks like mud, it sticks like mud, it holds you down like mud, Mm -hmm. but it's really fears and doubts. Yeah, yeah. And then when he gets, he cries out for help and then a messenger comes and helps him out of it. And he's, uh, the messenger talks to him, he says, and this is the least of the troubles you're headed for. Mm. And the pilgrim, who's got, who's on making the progress, he gets up and says, have you seen the, uh, um, I forget, the master of the celestial city? And he says, yeah, he's the one sent me here. Mm -hmm. He said, have you seen the celestial city? He said, yeah, I've seen there. That's where I came from. (laughs) And then he takes out, the the pilgrim takes out his hand and pushes him to the side and said, I know it's going to be tough. I read it in the book. Yeah, I hear But you. I'm determined Come on. that I'm going to go on, you yeah. know, and I just like that scene yeah. out of that um, movie. Well, the thing is, just real quickly, it, like you said, this, this chapter starts with the favor. And so he's magnifying by talking about this list, the favor. Absolutely. Not the list. He's magnifying Absolutely. the favor Absolutely. that has got him through all these things and then telling them as you pointed out i'm openly telling you you know yeah. what this is costing to bring this and know? he's he loves it yeah and he loves them he loves the favor yeah because you it's, can't do it it's the presence it. that draws you near to god yeah. it's just i mean if people so, just knew what you've been dealing with with the state of tennessee oh my god recently i mean <laughs> i mean we don't talk about, and maybe we should, stuff. I don't mean, no, you have to be careful, you have to be that. careful with that stuff, yeah, but the pressure, I'm just saying uh, the pressure, oh my God. and it's like, but it's, it's favor, crazy. I mean, it's, it's just favor that just keeps you and all of us keeping us on the call that the Father has for us. Without that pressure, God couldn't do the work in me that he wants to do. He's using it, brother. And He's uh, using hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Evidently, it's taking more pressure to get <laughs> more work done. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you want to get the house cleaner, you have to turn up the what? The um, what? What? Um, pressure washer. Oh, the pressure, pressure washer. washer power. <laughs> so in the first one, it's in much endurance. The second one is in pressure. The third one is in hardships. The KJV says necessities. Hmm. The scripture translation says hardships. KJV says necessities. Now these words have a lot of different applications sure. with their definitions. But this means, or could mean, when things are in short supply. Well, isn't that a timely word? (laughs) Uh, Is it not relevant? Yes. (laughs) When things are in short supply. 
you know, there were times in Joel's ministry where things were in short supply. Mm -hmm. And he had to learn to be content with a little or with a lot. That's what he said. And there's great peace in that. And there's great reward mm -hmm. in that. And so I found it interesting here that it actually addresses wow. when things are in short supply. Wow. We're to have favor on us. And that's hardships. Yeah. What happened to the children of Israel? If they would have just oh, made use of the favor. Goodness. Help us, Father. Yeah. They wouldn't have complained about the shortages. Right. So, beloved, hear that word. Live and learn. Don't complain about the shortages. You know, um, so that's hardships. One is much endurance. Two is in pressures. Three is in hardships or when things are in short supply. Number four is in distresses. Strong's says narrowness of space or confined space or no wiggle room. <laughs> So when no, and I added no wiggle room. That wasn't, that wasn't in Strong's. But, <laughs> I thought Strong's was going for it there. Yeah. The, but if you've ever been in, in a place where you feel like you couldn't go right, you couldn't go left, you couldn't back yeah. up, you couldn't go forward, and it's, it's just a tight place. Constricted by pressure. Constricted by pressure. That's this word. It comes from Matthew. It's used in Matthew 7, 13, mm. and 14, mm. where it talks about narrow is the gate mm -hmm. and straight. Closed in with pressure. Mm-hmm. So that's the first four. The, in verse, that's the first four in verse four. Actually, that's four in verse four. I didn't realize that. Four in verse four. So that's easy to remember. There's four in verse four. So in verse five, it contains the next six on the list. There are six things. And listen, he just categorized them in, just like ding, 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 ding. And so it's not, some of these are not hard to see. But uh, number five in verse five is in stripes. And the Weiss translation, I think, puts it right, beaten with rods or whip. Shaul went through that. Um, and when Kepha and John went through it, they rejoiced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Paul and Silas went through it. They rejoiced. That's favor. That's got to be favor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. These attributes, and we're going to, when we get down in here, uh, into the latter part of the list, the last 18 things that are in the list, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be really opposing back and forth. Mm. And there's whatever they've got, God's got it in extra. Mm. You know, whatever's coming at you, God's got extra, mm -hmm. more than enough to get through that. One of the other things that, uh, again, taking out of Acts lately that I've been studying in relation to the Corinthian study is when um, Shaul had been arrested and he was dealing with, um, with Felix and then Festus came and he was being held you oh, know, yeah. during that mm -hmm. time. Well, again, this time a prophet didn't come to him, but Yeshua himself, the master, came and spoke to him, and they conversed or conversed about what he was going to be suffering and what mm -hmm. he was going to be doing. And think about the favor. I mean, the, of, oh, man. I mean, Yeshua comes in a you know while you're in prison that night and starts talking to you. Talk about the fellowship of him with you in your suffering. We we just the don't. Favor. You know, we, we, we see the list and we just think, how on earth does a person do that? But his favor, I mean, the supernatural leading and encounters in the book of Acts is just amazing. It is just so jumping out to me this time. Awesome. And that is the favor of it's Jehovah favor. to get them and us through whatever's before us. So don't use the favor in, in vain. vain. And realize the more pressure, the more hardships, the more... Um, distress, the more need of endurance, the more favor That's coming will be on upon you. you. You know, how much did he feel those stripes? I mean, maybe they were horrendous and he felt, or maybe I've heard some stories of martyrs where they didn't even feel the fire. Um, they threw them in the fiery furnace in Babylon and they didn't even get burned. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Now, he did have the stripes in his body, and I'm not saying right. it was a picnic, but I'm just saying the favor right. of Yehovah is greater it increases in those situations it, as long as Yehovah wants to suspend the pain 
He can suspend it completely. I mean, you and I can both say, just doing services, how many times have we been sick? And prayed and said, Father, what do we do? And we feel like the Father said, I mean, I've been times where I could hardly talk. And I prayed, and the, and the Father says, I want you to go lead worship. And I'm like, you're kidding me. But okay, I'm going to go. That's and so right. I go, and I open my mouth, and I sing. I mean, I do. I have had mm-hmm. that happen numerous occasions. For some reason, a lot of the times after can... the worship service, I'm, I have a sore throat again. And I'm like, if I just knew how to keep that. But well, I, it's I can testify that you have done that because we have, you I know, have. talked it out and prayed it out and did it, worked it out. He, so. I mean, he will just, the favor of Jehovah is incredible. It is, it is sufficient. It is sufficient. Because it's miracle power. Come on. It's not some just some ethereal spirit. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a miracle power mm-hmm. of Jehovah residing upon you. Yeah. And you don't get it until you need it. That's true. <laughs> you know, so next, number six in verse five is in imprisonments, being imprisoned for the faith. That's not hard to understand. But what is hard to understand is we live in a country where we've not seen much of that. Lockdowns. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's more than a lockdown. <laughs> You're in prison, that's, that's different than a lockdown. It is, but we moaned over, some, some of us some moaned, moaned over, over lockdowns. Just, just a lockdown, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and a, a lot of nations have not seen that kind of stuff. But there are people in nations Lots of them. Just read the Voice of the Martyrs magazine. There are people suffering. And if you were to ask them if this was the great trouble, they'd say, yeah, it's they great did. trouble. Yeah. And so uh, I think Shaul, in the favor of God, was preparing him to prepare others mm-hmm. that that was coming, you know, because uh, eventually everyone as a believer was persecuted Mm -hmm. it was was, took about 300 years to get there but it eventually got there and either you joined state religion not that yeah not you either joined state religion or they kept hunting you down like dogs yeah you know and even into the uh because they didn't get them all 90 a.d they were i mean yeah a.d they were you had nero going on there well, they had persecution and all that going on, but they continued. And it's always oh, yeah. kind of went on. Even the Crusades and dealing with the Huguenots out of France. Mm-hmm. Again, France is coming up. There's something going on with France. What's going on with France tonight? Why don't we just pray for France tonight, the believers in France, and we just lift them up before your throne of favor. Favor. And ask for favor for any of those being uh, in the midst of these types of troubles. And trials. you know what? I know you guys have heard the stories too, but. I mean, there have been people in China because they've been so persecuted for their faith for years, imprisoned, you know, beaten, taken from their families. I mean, and, you know, I heard one time that they got word to a minister over here who was having prayer for the persecuted believers in China, and they said, stop praying for us. The favor of Jehovah is on us, and we are having fellowship with him. We're praying for you guys. Yeah. Because they saw the Laodicea. Spirit. Spirit, and you know, I told you this yeah. week I was reading that silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give you. And I was just thinking, you know, I'd just given somebody the spirit of quicken me to give some money to somebody that was needing some money, and I was thinking, wow, silver and gold I have, so I give you, but I couldn't say to that person, rise and walk. And I was just thinking, if you don't have silver and gold, is that when you can say rise and walk? That's not always true, but the spirit was really pricking me of what's more important to have silver and gold or to be able to say, rise up and walk, you know? Mm -hmm. So those people that are being persecuted, they're praying for the people in America right now. Yeah, and I I read a book called The Heavenly Man. Oh yeah, I remember that. And I'm not gonna talk about it much, but if you come across that book, Mm -hmm. that'll encourage you and the favor of God that can be on you. Wow. He had so many stories. It was just amazing. Wow. Uh, just very similar stories. Wow. And, but if it happens to you, it's a greater story than you read about. You, you know what betcha. I'm saying? 
Um, and verse five, number five was in stripes, number six was in imprisonments, number seven was in disturbances. The King James Version says tumults. Weist, in his translation, said in the midst of political instability. Wow, right there. If, how many nations' leaders are changing right now? I mean, it's just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's political instability. Mm. This nation, whether you want to admit it or not, is in a volatile political instability I situation. think everybody has to admit it now. Nobody wanted to for a long time. But. Right, but it's, it's there. So he's addressing all this, and it's relevant right now. Yes. Now, now is the accepted time of favor, you know. There's short now. supply and political <laughs> instability. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stuff's going on, man. Uh, but there's favor. There's favor, and it's sufficient. Yes. It's more than sufficient. It's miracle power residing on you. So in stripes and imprisonments and disturbances, number eight, in toils. And then the Weiss translation says in labor to the point of exhaustion. And so I'm not going to dig that up any further, but uh, there's favor. And maybe that's part of why the Spirit led me to pray tonight for people that had been mentally and emotionally and physically drained today. Yeah. That's a form of exhaustion mm. that can impede your willingness and desire to move forward with God mm -hmm. or to do what you know you should be doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's favor for that. There is favor for that. Amen. There's favor when you're wore out. If you will, there and is. we've done this many times, if if you will, can count the times mm -hmm. that we've been worn out and it's time to, to minister a service mm -hmm. and we admit our weakness mm -hmm. and that's all Show was doing here. He's, he's admitting what he dealt with and mm -hmm. the favor comes on you mm -hmm. and it gives you strength. And sometimes it's so much strength, you can't go to sleep after you get that's done. That's true. <laughs> You know, we were building the Ark House over here. There were so many oh weeks where we just put in so much physical time. Oh and and then would come time for the service, and you're like, oh. And, you know, he just, just does it. it. He, he just, just does. It. He just has the favor to do it. Uh, so uh, number eight was in tools. Number nine is in watchings. In watchings. Um, and I, there was a ministry on that word last week about the favor of, for watching and by watching we mean yielding to the favor to stay awake mm -hmm. typically for me that's between the uh, third and fourth watch somewhere between 9 and 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. is where you I, that favor for watching mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you're gonna, the heavens are gonna open up and the scrolls are gonna roll down and you're gonna see all this <laughs> stuff. Uh, it doesn't mean you're gonna feel anything. Right. Uh, what it means is you're responding to the favor of God to watch. And we know how Yeshua exhorted the uh, set apart ones to watch with him that night in Gethsemane, and they were so exhausted. Mm -hmm. They couldn't trust for the favor to stay awake and watch with the Messiah. And I believe it was Father's sovereign will right. that he went through that struggle the way he did. Right. And uh, But in that place, you can receive the favor mm -hmm. and you can watch. Um, Amen. In those times. I've got something written on my notes there, but I can't. Uh, oh, or, or uh, you can make that decision in that favor. That favor can help you make that decision to watch to give instead in. of sleeping. Yeah, to give to that. Yeah. It's true. The, the number 10 is in fastings. Everybody loves fastings. <laughs> Watchings right? and fastings. Watching and fastings. Our flesh loves both of them. And I don't know that he didn't do the two of them together <laughs> Sometimes uh, they go together. It's a volunteer. Most of the time they go What's that? Most of the time they go together, but go ahead. Yeah. There's voluntarily doing without food, but there are many types of fastings. Mm -hmm. There's the fast like Yahushua did in the wilderness. That was a total fast or a complete fast. It was from hunger to hunger, mm -hmm. the 40 days. 
uh, Daniel's fast was he left off certain specific things that he felt no doubt a conviction to leave off. Mm -hmm. And that was his fast. And so there's different times of fasting. And of course, scripture says when you fast, it didn't say if you fast, it right. says when you fast. Right. So fasting is something that there is favor for us to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll just be honest with you. I don't do it without favor anymore. I've done it without favor. I, know. I don't do it I without do. favor anymore. <laughs> Uh, broke broke me from that. So that's these first 10 in verses 4 and 5. That's good. So now, to transition, Shaul is not prophesying these over your life. He is making known the failure of Elohim in all these different situations by faith. Yeah, I love that exaggeration of that. That's not the right word, but... I mean, he really is saying the favor is sufficient in all these circumstances because they're that, that most people without the, I mean, they would quit. Yeah. Uh, and anybody would. Yeah. But you've got to learn how to cooperate with favor. Well, I was just looking at that again, up there where it says receive, to receive in verse one, the favor of Elohim. You have to receive it. Of course, he's talking, don't take it in vain. But you do. You have to you cooperate have to with it. I mean, if yes. he says get up and pray, you know, your flesh goes, oh. <laughs> you know, you have what to What you receive. have to do is humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Favor doesn't come without humility. Come on. God resists the proud but gives favor, favor to, to the, the humble. humble. And so what happens is, and you've learned this and I've learned this, if we're feeling that desire in our inner man to pray, but our outer man is complaining about it, <laughs> then what you do is you be honest, which is, Kind of what Paul's trying to encourage the Corinthians to do, open their hearts wide. Right. And say, God, I don't want to pray. I, yeah, I've done that. But I will if you help me. Yeah, yeah, and he will. And you be four hours later and you go, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Elohim, mm -hmm. what happened? Mm -hmm. And the favor came on you. Mm -hmm. Somebody was talking to me about um, a service rate recently, and it went, you know, for uh, two and a half, two and three quarter hours. And they said, I thought it was five minutes. Mm. And that's favor. That is favor. That's when you're in that presence of favor and time just goes. Mm -hmm. And where God is, there's favor. Amen. And time, I, I don't know how to call it, but it changes mm -hmm. in his presence. So, so uh, he's not prophesying over these, these over you and saying, this is going to happen to you, this is going to happen to you. But what he's trying to tell you is, is that there's favor for every one of these situations to the fullest. And, you know, I have found, and you have found, and I'm sure many of you guys have found, that as we've continued in our walk with Yeshua mm -hmm. and following him, that hopefully you've experienced that the favor of Yehovah increases on your life. At least your awareness of it increases. Yes. I hope so. Oh, and my word. And it's like there's those mornings sometimes where I wake up and maybe I've just been really physically putting out or just through a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. family situations or things going on. And you wake up and, and I don't immediately feel that pull to, ooh, I want to go drink some coffee and then get in Father's presence and see what's <laughs> going on. You know, it's so, when I don't have that, I'm like, uh-oh. Where'd that go? Where are you? I'm with Where's you. Where's that favor? Father, draw me. And many times I just say, Father, draw me today. Father, draw me today. Absolutely. And, you know, he is so, 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 so faithful. But it, it dawned on me the other day how, you know, after you walk with him for a while, you get so used to that favor being on you. And you know it's not you that's calling you, that's pulling you, that's doing all that, that you... You miss, you miss it. You notice it when it starts to not be there. Oh. If you've gotten just busy one day or a couple of days and you didn't have as much time in the Word or prayer or something, and then all of a sudden you feel a little distant and a little not connected, and it's like, where, where are you? you know? That's the way he's trained me. Yeah. He's trained me because when I don't want to do what I should be doing spiritually, it's like a lack of favor. Say that again. When I don't want to do what I'm supposed to be doing spiritually, it's a lack of favor. Mm -hmm. And that is the cue to simply humble yourself and admit where you're at and then get the favor on you again. And it'll be like the favor was never gone. And then it's like... You, and he may even just give you more favor exactly. than you asked for. And the other morning I woke up and it was really early and nobody was up yet. 
And I was like, oh, I don't know, it's so early, I could just lay here. I thought, wait, if I get up, I could have two extra hours in the Word this morning. Because <laughs> Father's been giving me some time this summer to have some extra time in the Word. And I was like, ah, so I got up and was being real quiet so nobody would wake up. <laughs> and I got in my study and had my little cup of coffee in my scripture. And I was like, let's do it, Abba. What are you talking about today? It was awesome. He's I mean, awesome. I mean, so these first ten are... Um, trials in the flesh, being in prison, being beaten in your flesh, having antagonistic, working to the point of exhaustion, watchings, making your flesh stay awake, uh, fastings, doing without food. These, that's why I categorize them as 10 trials in the flesh. Oh, cool. And so now we're shifting focus, actually, because hmm. I noticed this pattern in here today. And the King James makes it very clear there's a pattern in here. In the first 10, if I'm remembering correct, I'm not looking at King, King James scripture right now, but in the first 10, it said in, and in the next 10, it said by, B-Y, instead of I-N. Now, I don't know how technical that is, but they made a distinction, and I started noticing that distinction, and then you, you see this category as these come up. This second category, verses six and seven, there are 10 virtues, 10 virtues by the spirit of favor. 10 virtues by the spirit of favor. And in verse 6 through 7, there are 10 virtues by the spirit of favor. Virtues. Virtues. Number 11 in this list of 38 is cleanness. Say cleanness. Cleanness. KJV says hmm. pureness. This is internal cleanness. Cleanness of body, soul, and spirit. Can you just read verse 1 in chapter 7 that you're looking at right there? And then um, I w I'm going to get my scripture while you're reading that and read. I want to read 1 Thessalonians 5.23. All right. So that, uh, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Having then these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of the flesh and spirit. So interesting perfecting yep. set apartness in the fear of Elohim. So he's talking about being cleansed mm -hmm. from in the in the flesh mm -hmm. and in his spirit. And spirit, yeah. Both of them. From defilement. And you may not realize that, but defilement. In 1 Thessalonians 5:23 it says, "And the Elohim of peace himself set you completely apart. So this is part of being set apart. That's what the spirit does. It sets you apart. And your entire spirit and being and body be preserved blameless. Mm. It's cleansed. Mm -hmm. It's blameless. At the coming of our master, Yehoshua Messiah, exclamation point. Uh, that's an exclamation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at the coming, it, you want, you're going to be blameless. That's mm -hmm. what he wants it. When the, that's this, favor. this says, <laughs> yes, this says that when he returns, his body will be blameless. Yes, it does. That's what say it says. That. That's going to be a lot of favor. He's got it. Because they're going to be He's pressure got the favor. working on us to He's get us to that favor. place. Come on. He's got the favor. So that has to do with cleanness. Yes. Now, I want to be particular about this. If you've skipped this area, or have not been aware of the need for cleansing, then do what I did. Seek Elohim until he shows you and leads you through getting clean. That's good. That means dealing with brokenhearted issues, dealing with unforgiveness issues, getting cleansed from unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. In chapter seven, verse one, I've said this many times when we get there, he's talking about his own personal deliverance. Yes, he is. From the, the demonic. You mm -hmm. can't be a hater of people and and slaughter people and he be involved in them, murder put them in and prison. have an unclean spirit. You just can't be that no, way. No, no, no. So. And religious spirits are some of the most unclean and he was very religious. Absolutely. <laughs> and so False religion. don't skip the, the getting, the cleansing internally. Oh, man, One mother. of the things Yehoshua said in, in his quote from Isaiah 60 in Luke 4, I think it's verse 18, he said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. It's one and to preach the good news to the poor, the mm -hmm. poor of spirit. Mm -hmm. And brokenheartedness, there's so many people with cracks mm -hmm. 
in their heart mm -hmm. from brokenness, the way their parents raised them, the way the neighborhood kids treated them, the way their uh, siblings treated them or didn't treat them or their parents didn't treat them or, you know, all those different things, those broken, brokenness inside. Yeah. You got to get cleansed from all that. Yeah. The wounding. Because in that, and in, 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 even in my background, there was uh, witchcraft in it. There mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. uh, Masonic stuff in it. There mm -hmm. was unclean spirits of all types of stuff from mm -hmm. people, you know, and don't negate to get, let God cleanse you inwardly. Yeah. We've been through hours of letting Shoot. Father do that. I mean, you yes. drug me to the first cleansing, um, cleansing <laughs> service because I was raised in a family where you just threw stuff under the carpet. You <sighs> didn't deal with issues. You know, just, I just overlook it until, like you said, you can't walk through the door anymore. Because there's, the, there's such a pile the under, the carpet, under the carpet. A lump under the carpet, so how you can't get in the But door. it was like, no, nah, we don't need that. We're a new creature in Messiah. We don't need that. We got it all. I'm confessing it all. And so I've told the story many times. Yes. But you took me to that meeting, and I thank God because it opened up you opened the, your heart. Yeah. It's what he's telling these Corinthians to do. Selah. Good word. I'm just saying. It's a good word. It's the truth. It is the truth. It's the truth. So number 11 is cleanliness. And it takes favor to do it. Yes. It's purity. purity. Blessed are the pure, pure in, in heart. heart. For they shall see. They shall see Elohim's wow. face. It's worth it. <laughs> That is a specific promise in the book of Revelation that this group of people are going to see his face. Mm. Isn't that Matthew 5 as well? Well, yeah, that's the beatitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's called the beatitude. Right. Actually, it's, uh, it's a state of eternal bliss. Right. Uh, beatitude's not even in the text. I know, I know. Brr. So anyway, <laughs> but that, that's a good word to use because it, it describes... If you want eternal bliss, mm -hmm. that's Get your heart clean. the list. Yeah. <laughs> eternal bliss, that's the list. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, that's a promise to those who get clean. They'll see God. Oh, my. Number 12, and we're winding down to the end of our time again, which is fine. And uh, I've got some work done for next week. Hallelujah. So, number 11 was cleanness. Don't skip the process, beloved. You can't go on if you don't get clean. Mm -hmm. The pressure, what do you do, and then just be vernacular, what do you do to a zit? You squeeze it till you get the junk out. Yeah. What do you do to a wound? You gotta get the infection out. You gotta get, if it's got uh, pus in it, you've gotta get that out before you can get a healing. Right. Before you can get whole. Right. And that's what the picture is with this cleanness. You've got to come to that place mm -hmm. where you get cleanness. Get the infections in your soul healed yeah. and your spirit healed. And when will that be completed? The day you comes. cross the finish line <laughs> into eternity. Do not believe that that's all done already. There's always that layers. that is not done. No. We're and still in process too. Hallelujah. We all are. Yes, absolutely. Knowledge, number 12, knowledge. This is virtues by the spirit of favor. And this is, excuse me, knowledge by seeking to know. In the Hebrew, it's the word yada. And it means, excuse me, it means to know by observing, mm -hmm. meditating, mm -hmm. or experiencing. Hmm. That's what knowledge means in the Hebrew word yada. It means to know by observing. And that's what you're exhorted to in the scripture. You're exhorted to observe his ways, mm -hmm. keep his commands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how you get knowledge of God. By meditating, Joshua 1, 8, Psalm 1, and etc. Every time it says hope, it also includes waiting. And so you're meditating. It means to rehearse scripture. And all I like to say it is meditate scripture till you memorize it. It's good. That is go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it again. Uh, the picture in Joshua is muttering it. It means you just, you keep mumbling it over and over again. You, I've even heard some people say it's like you worry it. Mm -hmm. You just rehearse it, you rehearse it, you rehearse it. Because that's what worrying is. It's but that's negative. negative yeah. But worrying the scripture would mean positively going over and over and over in the scripture. And the end game is to get that engrafted into you. That's good. That's the end game. And so 
It's seeking to know, the Hebrew yada, to know by observing, meditating, or experiencing, which results in or includes spiritual intimacy with truth. Mm. What it does in that process is you become intertwined with it and you become inseparable Ichad from it. When you get, it, 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 it meshes with you. It's like a finely weaved garment. Mm -hmm. Some threads go in one direction, some threads go in the other, but when you scoot them together, they're meshed together. They become one garment. It's good. And that's what this knowledge that Shaul is talking about by favor. So he has received favor then in these virtues to be able to be perfected in them. Being yes. perfected in them. That's really good. I've never noticed that change before. And, and we're going to have, you know, we just did two, and there's a 10 in this section. Mm -hmm. And then there's 18. 18 in the next section. Oh, my goodness. Wow. 18 of them. And we just, we, we barely got through 12. I think Shaul was like you. He liked detailed lists. <laughs> I mean, when it's got that much life in it, I, I, How would you I, I've got to have it. I know. I don't know if everybody else got to have it, but I've got to have it. I love you. You're such a good counter. You count I things so well. <laughs> I like it. My father's counter. He does. He counts everything. Cattle on a thousand hills. Every bird. <laughs> he counts the dust on the scales. He can tell you how much weight dust is on your uh, balance scales. That's true. He can tell you all of that. I want to welcome um, Christine in tonight. We've got, I don't know, Christine, we may have been in before, but I appreciate your uh, coming in. And I wonder, her last name is B-U-V-E-T. That looks like Bouvet, maybe. That sounds French. Oh, it could be. But I don't know. And I'm saying that because earlier, you may not have been in, but there's been an emphasis on uh, France. France, France tonight. And we pray for France. Uh, that's and interesting. The I'm not saying that it may be something German. I don't know what it is, but. Well, that's okay. But welcome whatever your dna harks <laughs> uh, do we want to cover one more or we want to just go in and it's pretty close well, it's 8 30. uh is it will it end the virtues i mean that's no to you, no right? I'm, you I'm, decide. I'm there's eight more in this oh well it's 8 30. So. yeah let's let's just we'll get into that we'll next patiently week. It's really wait good. till next week we'll patiently <laughs> wait till next week we'll have favor on us until next week there's lisa wallace yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Lisa. Hello, yeah. All right. Uh, so let's, um, let's. Let's see if we've got any prayer requests. You guys can um, put that in there. I know Miss Cheryl uh, was going to be flying today, so uh, I, I don't know if she's back yet. Favor for her. So she was uh, going to be in a small plane, and she was just praying Requesting for favor. extra angels, messengers yeah. to be with her. Oh, <laughs> Shalom girls going, one more, one more. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. But, um, Thank you, Cindy. But pray for Miss Cheryl. Father, we do just lift up Cheryl as she flies or having flown. I think she's still probably. But, Father, we just thank you for watching over her and uh, bless her on her upcoming birthday. Yes. We just thank you for that. And, Father, we just lift up the Gronis family. I know yes. they had shared their AC was out. I don't know. I haven't mm. heard anything about it being fixed. Uh, I've been busy Hallelujah. with some family things, and I uh, have not been in chat quite as much. So just watch over them and um, and pray healing as they're continuing to heal in to their recover. home. So Christine says it's a hard T pronunciation, so bouvet, I guess. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'm sorry, Did Christine, say, if I'm not saying uh, no, your name correctly. We don't want to mess it up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pray for the Campbell family and the Noick family and yeah. the Gunter family and the Nikimas in Brazil yeah. and the Copeland family. And that's all I know on my list. Yeah. I just continue to pray for the grand, too, because yes. I don't know. She's just on my heart. So, Father, I just lift her up to you. You know yes, her needs, Father. and I pray that you meet her uh, where she is, and I just thank you for that. And I don't see Susie in here tonight. Kim, I don't know. I hope she's doing well. We just pray uh, shalom up. over Susie. We know sometimes people don't make it in, but we do that. Uh, Christine says, my husband's last name. He is Puerto Rican, however, Puerto some Rican. French in the bloodline. Oh, oh okay. She's awesome. like the rest of us, got a little bit of everything. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. So, Father, we do lift up the Campbell family tonight and the uh, uh, 
difficulties they are facing. We are lifting up Father, uh, the Nikki, my family in Brazil, and all that they're facing down there in Brazil, and the work that they're doing there, and the translation work that they're doing. Yes, Father. Father, we lift up um, the uh, Gunter family and the struggles that they are having, and uh, with the the cancer father we're praying and lifting up uh diana palmer and uh the report that they have gotten we're lifting them up yes father. we're lifting up the uh, copeland family and their health issues father we're lifting up um, the body today and any need that we don't know of or any weight or care or concern or burden that people are carrying we lift that all up before your throne right now father we thank you for a good report today and we ask you to continue the work uh, to the fullness of the statue of Messiah in that situation and in all these situations. Father, let your favor mm -hmm. be upon us. Oh, Father, yes. And help us to humble ourselves and yield to that favor. We thank you for it. We give you all praise and esteem. And Father, I just continue to thank you that you've heard uh, my prayer for my mother and I just thank you for yes. your will being done there. And we disagree with Rosie. Um, prayers for her daughter and husband as they are being uh, in the Air Force relocated to um, Las Vegas. So, Father, we just pray your perfect will yes, will be Father. done over them. We just pray that you would continue to draw them uh, to you. And, yes, Father. And uh, reveal to them the divine purpose for their life. And, um, Father, we just thank you for continuing to work in their hearts. Yes, Father. And we just thank you for that. Yes. And I just lift up my sister Nancy and my sister Diane and my brother Steve and my uh, sister-in-law Susie mm -hmm. in Yahushua's name. I lift them all up for prayer today. Thank you, Father. Father, we Thanks, just Father. receive encouragement from mm. your word. Yes. We thank you for the example of Shaul and the faithfulness of your favor upon him. Yes, And thank Father. you for your people all around the world during this day and this hour, Father, that you are showing us yes. how to position yes, ourselves. We are preparing us for that which is coming. And, Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness to us. We pray for our government. We pray that yes. you would cause this government in this nation to do your will, Father. And we thank you for the remnant of yes, this nation. Father. And we thank you for what you're going to do uh, in yes, the days Father. ahead through your remnant. And we give you praise for yes. it. Yes. Prepare us. Yes. Spiritually and naturally, Father. Get us to the place of preparedness. Yes, Father. In all ways. Yes, Father. All of the ways. In Yeshua's name, we give you glory and esteem. We give you glory and esteem. Amen. Remember the blessed hope and look forward to seeing you folks on the Shabbat. Two o'clock on Sabbath. Be encouraged. <laughs>